Hello, everyone. Today uh, I will I will present uh, the, this paper that uh, it was planned to be presented by Subaria, who is the PhD that did most of the implementation, uh, but she didn't make to attend. So I, I will present instead of her. And so this work is done with several people here from different places because Subaria managed to contact all of us. And I can go next to this one. Let me have maybe can. This one? I don't know. I press it. It doesn't work. Really? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Could then try on the... Uh, maybe this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, maybe this one. Maybe it's locking or something like this. Wait. Cannot go to the left. Okay. Try with this. Okay. Just the red, the red button. Maybe this one. The red. Yeah, this maybe this one. Oh. The 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 arrow. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah, so uh so to start, we have, let's consider this scenario where we have several uh, sources and each source have some graphs and we want to, uh, then we integrate this graph in one graph and we want to query this graph, yes? So this is a, an example to show the use case of provenance and then we have a query. So here we have a select and in the word clause, as, as in the case where Philip shows us, we have some variables and these variables are intended to match the graph. That is an integrated graph there. So this lets, for example, that A is a solution because you can have uh, uh, A with the P to B and this X match the A and the Y match the B for the, for the edge that is identified by S1 uh, and this, this S1 is that because it comes from the data source uh, S1. And, and then a, a very simple way of provenance is Y provenance. So you have a set of the sources that are involved in the, to, to generate this answer. But a more expressive uh, way of provenance is this whole provenance that we will consider now. And it has the, the, the capacity to express how the answer were produced. So in this case, you know that S1 was needed for the first triple. So it, it, we require this S1. If we remove that, that data source, we will lose that solution. And alternatively, we can use the one of the other three uh, sources to capture the second part of the query. So this, this gives us some explanation of how the answer uh, is produced. So, the main question is how to compute this, this whole provenance, yeah, that is in a, it's called K annotated K sparkle in the, the formalist that we use, that we produce the, the solutions are, are, and, the, and the annotation that are polynomials. So this is called K annotated sparkle, but we want to compute this uh, formalist. What is the moon? The mouse, no, the mouse. I, I lost the image. But I, but I have seen, I see it still. Ah, no, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, we want to get this. So the question is if we can compute this one, as a compute the queries, annotated queries with a normal uh, engine. So uh, the first step is notation, a uh, thing that we, we need to notice is that in the normal engines, we don't have annotated the edges with identifiers. So to, to solve this first, issue, we can use reification. So here we, there are several, uh, there are many ways to reify the data. And this means that we want to give an identifier to the triple. So here we, we give U4. And this in the first one, uh, for example, standard reification, we give this U4. And for U4, I can, I can use the mouse. So I can get this U4, and then I can assign a probability that is here, is said. And then I have the triple that is, is this is a person, Gabriela Mistral, was awarded with the Nobel Prize of Literature. Uh, so the, this is the same triple here, but now 
is represented in another way that is reified. So this is a way to, to, to obtain this new identifier. So now we have the query. So the, this is the architecture of the solution is that we have the original uh, query and the original graph. And then if we execute this query, we don't get a uh, provenance. So these three dots means that we don't have the provenance. And the idea is then translate this query in a query writing to another query and translate the data to a reified form. And then we evaluate the query and now we have the provenance. So this is that we want. So for example, uh, this is now we consider this data. So now we have two uh, women that uh, here, uh, Gabriela Mistral and Olga Torkasuk, and they, they, they are winners of the Nobel Prize of Literature. And we have another one that is not winner. And then we can make a, quer a question, a query like this. So we ask for select the, the distinct women that have received an, an award. Yes. And so we have Gabriela Mistral and uh, Olga Torkasuk. Yes. So this is an extract of the data. And then we can imagine that we have uh, this query. Uh, that this was the solution that uh, in a paper that I wrote with uh, Luis Calagra and Katia Hoss uh, two years ago, we provide a solution that the query is rewritten in this way. And in this way, we, we have the triple that is uh, above. And then we refine the triple, and we add the, a variable to capture the value of the triple, the, the ID of the triple. So we, we capture the value of both triples, and we add an, another value variable to, to represent the, the product of both triples. Yes. So we did something like pro produce a table like this. Uh, in this case, we have twice Gabriela Mistral. Uh, it's no need to have twice there, there, but you can imagine that Gabriela Mistral have another price, yes, a second price. Uh, and then we have one variable for the first column, the zero, and the others you know, this should be one in the second column. And, and then we have these two, uh, like a table. And then for that uh, solution we have, we, we do a post-processing that use the, the variable names that we, we intentionally name this way to be able to recognize, recognize the, the, the original, the, the polynomials they are encoding. And then Sovaria comes with a, another idea that is uh, having the, the polynomials in the cells of the table. Yes. And for that, in the first part, when you have the two triple patterns, we want to join. So we have a, a product uh, that is a synthetic sugar for the concatenation of the polynomials in the same cell. That can be a concatenation in a string level. Uh, and then we can get then the, the product as a string. And then we need to combine the two mistral, options to miss for Gabriela Mistral uh, together. And for that, we use a aggregator sum that combines rows of the table that is in that place. So we, this allows us to get a polynomial inside the query. And in the paper, you can see uh, several uh, rules that make the rewriting recursively. And after that, we also have uh, optimization rules because these uh, rewriting in, in the original rules, they, they have several aggregated aggregation level that over aggregation that doesn't change the polynomial. So there is also an op optimization rules to make this more efficient. And then there is a comparison between the, the previous method and the new method. And, and the, so here you can see that in this green color, there is a sparkle without the provenance. And this is all, always faster because it doesn't compute the polynomial, so it doesn't have this overhead. And then there is the, the previous method that is sparkle prop, and the new method that is NPCS, that is native provenance, now uh, computing for a sparkle. And and the, the previous method has some timeouts here, and it's always slower than the other. Uh, in most of the cases, it's, it's slower. And especially in these cases, and these cases were the cases where the, the, there are more answers. Yes. Uh, 
Then we this, we use this graph DB and start off we say we see the same so the same results and then we added enlarge the data to see what happened and here we got more timeouts and a, a, a bigger difference. So then we conclude that this is a so the this post processing impacts a lot of the the results. And we do a similar research over the Wikidata uh, with the Wikidata benchmark, Wiki benchmark. And we also obtain the same result that the sparkle prop is lower than the, the, the new solution. And uh, so as a conclusion, we, we can say that uh, we can now we have a method that do all the query writing inside Sparkle, so it's it's complete as Sparkle, and this uh, allow us to include for, for because when we have the the provenance, one of the ideas of the provenance is that the provenance polynomials can be replaced replaced by a specific. Uh, uh, algebraic structures. For example, we can replace uh, this for trustness uh, semi-rings or for other uh, structures for, for a specific use case. Uh, so now we can inject this into the database instead of requesting the translation of this. So we can do a lot of uh, different works with, with because we are working now directly in the database side. And this, uh, we show that this allows to get more results in the provenance, so produce, produce, produce a lot of results, and to do ETL processes, because the previous method requires to get all the data before doing the post-processing, because we cannot ensure that all the rows are for the same. We need to wait for the final row to be ensured that there is no more rows for the, for the same answer, yes, in, in Sparkle. But in this case, we, because the aggregation is done in the database, then we get if row provide the, polyno the, the polynomial, and then we can also paginate or separate or do different things. And that's all. Thank you. Very interesting.